Hey guys! Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy X! Last time, we took out a number of the species creations. This time, let's take out some of the other species creations, because why the hell not? Let's start with Tankit. This guy has 900,000 HP, 10,000 for the overkill. His attacks will inflict both delay and berserk. Armor break is, he's susceptible to it, but he has 50% resistance. And mental break, he has a 99% uh, resistance. And I think his stat was like, his magic defense stat is like 250. I, I don't really know why, but uh, anyway, use a frag grenade on him. Uh, by the way, during all of the farming I've done in the meantime against this guy and some of the other ones, I've gone through at least 100 frag grenades, which is why I went out of my way to make that armor earlier in the game. Uh, this is the point in time where you really want quick hit and you really want to, your cursor to be set to memory so that you don't have to scroll down all the time and you can just keep spamming the button and kick the crap out of them. Now, you can tackle this guy when you're a little bit lower on ter in terms of levels, when you're not doing that much damage. Um, if you want to, you can use a frag grenade, use anima, uh, you can also just quick hit him with some weaker attacks or use some overdrives to take him down, that would work too. Uh, he drops defense spheres. He's not one of the more challenging ones, but the key is to have frag grenades or Orin's uh, banishing blade overdrive. That one also will inflict all the breaks with 100% accuracy, even if they have resistance to it, just like the frag grenade. Uh, who else can we fight here today? I know where I'm going. Ah, uh, Fafnir, we already fought this guy, but last time we kind of cheesed through him. This time we can, we're strong enough we'll be able to take him up. Again, frag grenade. What, uh, what do you have on here? Where's my, uh, where'd my notes go? Oh, right there. Uh, 1.1 million, 13,000 for the overkill. And as soon as you hit him with, uh, with a nice, uh, frag grenade, he's a lot easier. Uh, if you're fighting him lower level, then, as I said before, you know, he has 95% uh, resistance to breaks. Um, he'll target the character with the lowest HP, or the lowest current HP, with a lot of his attacks. And he does do a triple attack, which I probably should show off. In fact, we'll, uh, we'll guard so that he can actually use that. He didn't this time, but... Um, He'll do that attack, followed by an elemental salvo that hits all your party members. And I think one of them can break the damage limit, I don't know which one. He's immune to fire, ice, and lightning, those are the same elemental attacks that he can use. So you can use Null All to protect yourself, uh, you can use Shell to protect yourself, protect obviously. Um, elemental Eater Armors, uh, as I mentioned before, where you could pick those up uh, from the tank at there, or not the tank at the, um, oh, the Neg Elemental in the last episode there. I know I mentioned it at some point. So there's that one. You still get the light curtains from him. Ah, uh, that's the only real point to fighting him so that you can, you know, get auto protect on. Uh, let's see, who else can we fight? The Sleep Sprout. Now, as I said before, it's a rare drop to get uh, Dark Matters. So if you want to farm Dark Matters from any of the enemies in the Monster Arena, you want the one that dies the fastest. This one. <laughs> the uh, Sleep Sprout has 98,000 HP, 10,000 for the overkill. He will use Ultima and some other elemental attacks on you, you know, Faraga, Thundaga, that kind of stuff, Flare. He ambushes you rather often and he'll use Good Knight. He also counters any attack that doesn't kill him with Good Knight. Good Knight will inflict Poison, Preserve, Power Break, Armor Break. Those normally, I'm not sure how many turns for some of them, but it'll inflict sleep for 99 turns. I don't know how anyone figured this out, how you could last 99 turns against this guy, maybe with auto regen or something. But uh, yeah, so um, if you're not gonna kill it in one hit, don't bother. He has low evade and he's not particularly high on defense. So he's the easiest one if you want to try and farm dark matters like this. Uh, we'll fight him one more time real quick so that I can show off what he drops normally. Can't remember what it is. Yeah, so he's ambushed me here. He's gonna use good night. This is what you want to be aware of. And it'll inflict sleep and, well, it looks like it's got berserk. Did I say berserk? Looks like they're in berserk. 
Anyway, if you have Ribbon, and I'm, I'm surprised I didn't mention this before when we got Ribbon. Ribbon is unique to the International and the HD versions of the game. The original PS2, we did not have access to it. And I remember always looking it up when I had that version, and I was like, really? I want it. And as you see, now that we've taken some damage, we don't deal full damage anymore. So he's going to counter, he's going to hit us again. Ribbon is basically your savior in this fight. Uh, but the thing is, it doesn't really matter if you don't... Uh, like, if you're... If you, if you take some damage and you get hit with Goodnight, you're not going to get game over, so it's not like you have to worry about anything. So heal up and finish him off. He does have some armor there. Um, you can, I believe you, can you use armor break on him? I didn't write it down if you could, but it uh, doesn't really matter. You can usually deal enough damage, and you get uh, teleport spheres from him if you uh, still need those to move around the grid. Uh, let's get everybody healed up before we... Try and take on anybody else. All right, and the Bomb King. Bomb King you could take on at uh, lower levels because he's only got 480,000 HP, 10,000 for the overkill. He's a bomb, he absorbs fire. Um, he has an interesting uh, pattern here. Let's, uh, let's show this off here. He doesn't counter. Uh, let's see. But after you hit him three times, he grows. And every time he grows, he'll change his attack pattern. Now, I don't think he has a specific pattern, but in his first form, he'll use normal attacks and fire spells, regular fire spells. In his second form, he'll use uh, normal attacks and Fira spells, or Fira spells. In his third form, he'll use Faraga normal attacks. Once he gets beyond that, then he'll use Ultima and some powerful attacks. So you want to really kill him a lot faster. I Basically, you've got like, I would say, what, maybe 12 hits before you really have to worry too much about him. Once he gets to the point where he can use Ultima, then he's dangerous. Until then, he's not really all that dangerous. You can get Doors to Tomorrow from him if you need those. Um, we got more than enough, I think, earlier on, so I don't really need those. Ah, he's the Juggernaut, bitch. I always found that line was just always really stupid in that movie, but I still enjoyed it just because it was like, I don't know, random. It's like they built the whole thing up just so he could say that line. I had a friend who uh, really liked uh, the uh, the comics and the, uh, the animated series from the 90s, and he didn't like it because it was so different from what the character was before, but I didn't really care. I watched the old cartoon as well, and I enjoyed it. Uh, this is... who the hell is this guy? This is the Juggernaut, 1.2 million uh, max HP, 15,000 for the overkill. He's actually completely immune to magic in the same vein that the Jumbo Flan is completely immune to physical, so you can't use any magic on him. Though, for some reason, you can actually use Mental Break and Magic Break on him, which is kind of weird. Like, you can use Mental Break on him, but you still can't hit him with magic, at least I would think. But, anyway... You just use quick attacks and you can usually kill him. Uh, he uses a fire-based uh, salvo that hits all your party members, so no blaze, and you're fine against that. You can use crush spike, which is single targeting and inflicts instant death, so we don't have to worry about that. But he's pretty easy to beat, and you get strength spheres from him, so that's important. And we have one more left. We've got... Ironclad, 2 million HP, 99,999 for the overkill. He counters everything with his physical attacks. Uh, he has 95% resistance to full break. Uh, the other guy, had you had to use, uh, the, who was it, the Juggernaut? You got to use uh, armor break on him. So as with pretty much anyone who looks like they might, uh, you might need to, use a frag grenade on him but he counters every attack you make with an attack that does that much, even if you have auto protect on. Now, there's a number of ways you could take him down. Anima works really well. You can use Anima, and uh, as long as you've inflicted armor break, summon Anima, Anima can kick the crap out of him. That's fine. Um, other than that, I think the most effective way is attack rules. I really do. If you power it up enough, so I've got, I think, what, about 150, 160 uh, strength stat with Waka right now. Not even finished the whole sphere grid yet, and it'll do max damage to him as long as you've inflicted armor break. He'll counter with that, and then what we do is we entrust him with another one. 
And as long as we don't screw it up, we should be more than fine to take him down this way. And I think it's the most effective way, it's the fastest way, and it's the easiest way. And as long as you can do that, you should be fine. All right, so there's that. What else can he do? He's immune to fire, ice, lightning, and water. Again, shouldn't matter. Um, he does have one hit that you want to be aware of. Um, and I didn't get to demonstrate it, so we'll, we'll go back in the battle and we'll uh, show it off again so I can uh, demonstrate it because this one can lead to your game over relatively easily. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we'll just guard a whole bunch here. Throw on fast forward there, make things a little faster. And I do want to get... Nope, not in trust. Where is it? want to throw a frag grenade at him. Because I don't think he uses it unless he loses a little bit of HP. But yeah, if you're just trying to quick hit him to death like this, it's not particularly effective because every time you die, your thing will reset. And sometimes he'll just use his normal attack like that as a, uh, as a, like his counter as a normal attack. But sometimes he won't. Let's see if we can uh, show off some of his attacks here. That's one of them, and that can easily kill your party. The other one is just a more powered up attack, uh, like his counter, and that'll do like 12,000 damage to you or something like that. Kill one of your party members. You don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I wouldn't recommend fighting him first. Uh, we don't need that on anymore. In fact, uh, just to kind of go over these again, uh, one eye is probably the easiest one to kill. Not too much evasion with you know, as long as you can deal 30 or 40,000 damage, you can easily take this guy down and you get magic defense spheres for that. So I would recommend you do that first. The next one I would recommend you fight is the Hornet, because you can take him down with some overdrives and some quick hits without too much danger to yourself, and you get accuracy spheres from fighting him. So I would do him second. Then, once you've got some accuracy built up, you'll be able to hit this guy, who has particularly high evade normally, uh, and he dies in one or two hits or whatever, so he's easy to take down. You get MP spheres for that. Then I would move over here and work on the Juggernaut and the Tanking, in any order you want, really, because both of them, you all you need to do is use um, a frag grenade on either of them, and chances are, as long as you've gone through enough of the sphere grid, I've got maybe 150, 140 uh, agility. It's more than enough to take these guys down as long as you're quick hitting them a whole bunch along the way. And m many of their attacks you can protect yourself against or their single targeting. Uh, if their single targeting doesn't matter, you die, auto phoenix, you're fine. Um, anything that's multi-targeted, that's what you need to be able to protect against. So he doesn't have anything that's single or er, multi-targeting, and he's got something that's multi-targeting, but you can protect it because you have uh, Null Blaze, or you know, protect it some other way. Use uh, Riku's Overdrive, Ultra Null All. There you go. Um, after that, I would work on this guy. Uh, the Terex uh, has relatively high evasion, but he dies pretty easily once you get your accuracy. I would recommend getting your strength up enough before trying to take him down, because you need to deal full damage in order to get the overkill on. So that's why I recommend doing the strength first. Uh, let's see, got the bid, and then we, oh right, we haven't even shown this guy off yet. Fenrir. I would do him next, we'll get the agility spheres from him, and then work on Ironclad as the last one. So anyway, Fenrir. Almost forgot about this guy. This guy is a pain in the ass. He has an instant death counter. It bypasses immunity, including on Aeon, so Aeons are not a good choice for this fight. He has 50% resistance from all elements, except for Holy is normal. Uh, his Fangs of Chaos reduces your HP to 6.25% and adds confusion. I would basically just recommend some overdrives, because he counters all your attacks with an instant death attack. So, let's uh, go here. Do some entrusting. He has 850,000 HP, and you have to deal 99,999 for the overkill. So, if I get, uh, let's see here, if I do this correctly, we should be able to take him down easy. There we go. But yeah, since so many of attacks are 
that's one of the kind of the boring aspects of the post game is a lot of the enemies are easier to take out if you take them out before they get to hit you and you don't get to show a lot of the strategy involved now i was thinking i might show more strategy and like maybe do only like two or three per video and then you know just have you know a difficult fight against these guys but for the most part you don't really i don't know i just i don't think it would have been particularly beneficial so this guy has relatively high evasion so hitting him early um is unlikely it's one of the reasons why i like using overdrives so we're just going to guard here and we'll see one of his attacks fangs of chaos does damage it did less than i have more than the 6.25 hp left it's a gravity based attack because of protect and because of guard but it does inflict uh what we got there uh confusion we don't want that but it's only single targeting so it's not too bad so we can slice and dice him But yeah, I just kind of want to get some of these guys to show off their abilities. Many of them, uh, you know, as long as you've gone through a decent amount of the sphere grid, you don't really need to worry about it. But yeah, these guys, for the most part, have relatively high evasion, specifically on the left side of the page there. So there we go, we've hit them with that again. But yeah, once you've gotten enough uh, set up, many of them will only target uh, single, enemy, or single party members. Oops, nope. So you don't really have to worry about that too much. But unfortunately, since you miss so much, it's a pain in the ass and I just end up coming in the battle using uh, Waka's Overdrive and calling it a day. Fangs of Hell would have been instant death. There's a counter that missed. But yeah, that's the basic fight against him. He can be a right pain in the ass to deal with. Anyway, that's pretty much all for the species creations. Now, before we do the uh, original creations, which are relatively powerful. Oh, by the way, the uh, el the amount of HP you have uh, with the celestial weapons will affect the amount of damage you do. But that does not apply to overdrives because they are special damage. So Waka can have one HP or 9,999 HP. It doesn't matter. He'll still do the same amount with his overdrive. Figured I'd mention that. So before we try and take on any of the uh, remaining guys here, uh, let's see, in the original creations, these ones are all really powerful. So I would like to take on a few more enemies before we go back and do that. And those would be three more of the Dark Aeons. We took out Dark Valfor much earlier than we were intended, and uh, we made it work. Um, now that we have strength like this, uh, we're at a good point where we can take them down not easily, but uh, easily enough that uh, it's not too bad. Uh, the extra magic defense I added probably won't even make a difference on any of them. So, you know, the ones that I did on, uh, oops, on the sphere grid here. Now, we still haven't moved on the sphere grid since uh, I showed it off. Um, but yeah, for the most part, that's not going to make any difference. Most of the attacks the Dark Aeons have will probably kill you regardless. So... Anyway, that's pretty much all I want to do for today. Next time we will start up uh, taking on some of the Dark Aeons, and I will have some nice strategies to go along with that. But as far as anything else, as long as you have somebody with Ribbon, uh, the other two I would leave empty for now, because as you're doing all your farming for these spheres, it's going to be a random chance that you'll get Dark Matter instead. And the thing is, I've already got 52 of them. So I would like to get up to 99 so that I can get one more person with Ribbon before we take on the final set of Dark Aeons. Uh, Bahamut, Anima, and Yojimbo, and the Mega Sisters. Because again, some of them, it's very important. <laughs> so anyway, like I said, that's pretty much all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.